Morning guys. We're already off to a quick start. I'll just run through quick disclaimer for you guys. Go ahead, read it. We have a link in the chat. I ended up doing a quick write up so that we can go a little bit faster through the recap. But I think some of the biggest news last week, Tesla, 1 trillion. We had a nice little trade on Friday. Probably the highlight of the week for us. <laughs> very, very good trades intraday. For, for a lot of us throughout the week. But one thing to note, we've we've been in the heat of earnings season. Most of the companies are actually beating the quote unquote estimates or street estimates. Doesn't mean that they're gonna go up, obviously, but just to know where, where we stand in the market. In terms of some of the economic stuff that, that did come out last week, just the notable ones, new home sales was, I mean, we all know, you know, prices are high, but somehow monthly sales went up 14%, so. Congrats if you're in real estate. GDP was actually a little bit lower, came around 2% with a low expectations if we start seeing some better results as we get into the next round of releases. That could actually really push the market. Core PCE, personal consumption, expenditures, personal spending came in as expected. And I threw a new metric in here. Just it was a <coughs> reoccurring theme through earning season, but that's ECI or employment cost index. So that is going up considerably. I think as we move forward into some of these reports and this week, we have a very big week. So trade lightly if you can. The next round of economic data that we are going to get is going to be kind of like it, it's all a month behind. So it's actually lagging data. And what we've been working with is the Delta version like COVID Delta. So here we've, we've got, you know, no stimulus. Uh, and I think some of the expectations are, are high that the smaller medium sized business starts getting back to are used to seeing them. All right. Really quick, just again, did a quick overview. So this is the top 30 companies, Dow 30. That's supposed to be a zero, three zero, sorry. And right now we're sitting at 21 beats, one miss with the only one being Miss being Boeing and Apple being the one component that actually met expectations. So from here, we will just go through and jump into. So this is this week's calendar. So today we got some news. So we got manufacturing, ISM manufacturing. So <clears throat> this we are going to get the one I wanted to hit. We don't have it yet. Yeah, you know, everything's coming in pretty much in line. The biggest ones. We do have 110 companies reporting earnings today. So we do have a, a, some earnings trades for you for sure. Tomorrow we'll do a earnings session together and then Wednesday, probably a trading session together and then another earnings session. And then Friday we'll have probably all day session. We'll see. Tuesday's pretty light. And the biggest thing here's when we get into Wednesday. So Wednesday's the day that we really need to worry about. I would expect and I do expect that this morning today we'll kind of have this pop and then probably a little fade towards the afternoon or or tomorrow in, in anticipation of this massive economic data day. So we do get ADP on Wednesday morning. That used to be a really big thing. It's corporate job data. Doesn't include any of the federal employment stats or anything like that. So we will get that later on this week. Again, it's going to be a pretty big week. ISM services PMI, the services sector here has actually been the one that's been beat up the most. So if we do get some pretty good numbers in terms of this, this guy here, I'm actually expecting we've been doing pretty good, but if we get a good recovery in the services sector, I would expect that to be at least some non bearish news. Although we have, we have the biggest information here coming out on FOMC on Wednesday. So Powell's speech is, I think it was 2.30 Eastern is when it's scheduled. And so this one is going to be monetary policy. So we have the decision for the rates. I know we have all this taper talk. This is going to be, when do we expect rates to actually change? He hasn't been saying anything this year or next year. Right now, the market is very much expecting that purchasing bond purchasing is going to be decreasing. So I think that's priced in that shouldn't move a market the markets more or less expecting rate hikes to come in sometime mid 2023. So if anything's different than that, then maybe yeah. I would expect an extremely jumpy, jumpy day all day Wednesday. So this is 2.30 Eastern 
2.30 Eastern, so midday, right? If you're trading, expect just very jumpy, very, very jumpy markets. I, I don't expect to be doing a whole lot of crazy stuff. So we'll see. We'll see how the day goes on. Thursday, we have some preliminary numbers, non-farm payroll preliminary numbers, and an OPEC meeting. So oil, I think this is probably going to move some of our oil stocks. They seem to be carrying through today. Had some excellent stuff still on. That did well this morning. And jobless claims. So this number here, it's just been steadily dropping then actually kind of a good thing. If, if this starts dropping last week, we had our first number with the two in front of it. So we'll see where it goes. I think the market's really kind of starting to pay attention to that. So Wednesday, the biggest day for sure. Thursday, probably flat. And then Friday we have non-farm payrolls and this non-farm payrolls every month is for me, that's like, that's when the month actually starts. This is the most important number of the month, every month. And it, it really kind of sets the tone for the month, you know, based on how this comes out. So this is the number of new jobs, right? How many, how many jobs are they creating and, and kind of your barometer of like how well economy is doing. So again, huge number, very big, crazy day here. So I would expect probably a pullback Wednesday morning at the very least, if not sometime between this afternoon and tomorrow after this pop is done and then maybe run into Friday, maybe run into Thursday and Friday, closing the week, likely pretty strong Be between now and Wednesday. I'm just, you know, not, uh, I'd be very hesitant to do any major directional trades. I think with that, we can kind of jump in. So I'll start right out of the gate. Last week we had, this is S and P 500. I'm tracking spy. We had a little dynamic support here that did break. So you want to be mindful of this sets us up, I think pretty good for a little pullback. And so what I'm doing here, the orange box that you're seeing. So first of all, this is a 30 minute chart. This is last week. This orange box is an average weekly range. I I'm expecting somewhere like 75%, maybe a little bit smaller weekly range this week. So that would take us somewhere around 465 on the week after some pretty nice chop. Support, I'm still showing support really around 450, 455, right around this prior, prior high, but we are firmly in an uptrend still. So hopefully we get a little, another higher low, probably around where we bounced last week and continue on after Wednesday. I'd really, I'd really wait till after Wednesday to get more bullish. So NASDAQ this morning, I think this is the one to kind of watch with rates going to be a pretty big deal. This one might really be the one that gets the biggest pullback just cause it's more, a little bit more sensitive to some of that stuff. And again, about 75% of an average weekly range is what I would expect. We do have, a pretty good, strong dynamic support level right here. And we are right on it. So maybe bounce, pull back. And then this is setting up really nice for a, a really nice back half of the week rally, assuming that this support line actually holds. And this green line here is the prior, prior highs on all the charts. So this puts us target right around three, let's say just around, just about 390. So where I'm going to put that one. So that's the keys. We did spy. Uh, industrials. Similar kind of setup to everything else, right? Green line, all time highs, prior highs. And this one with the economy kind of reopening, I, and these guys are actually showing quite a bit of strength. I would assume that this one has a pretty good week as well. Orange box is average weekly range. And this week I would really just go about 75%. So that would put you just over 360 on this, this guy this week. And then this is the one that we are really watching. So we have a couple iron condors here. 
actually we have on the queues as well, the group does. Right here, this 335-ish level was the prior all-time high. We are not here, unlike the rest of the indexes. This guy has been range-bound for, for quite a while. I think the push that we're really just seeing right now is, you know, towards the reopening and this IWN is a mid cap index. So non-farm payrolls, things like that will actually, this guy has the most room to run. Let's just keep it that way. And this is smaller companies that needed the recovery to, to really kick off for them to start doing better. So. If this does break out of the range, we'll deal with it then. But for right now, we're about to test these all-time highs. This is for sure, in my mind, gonna act as resistance. And we very much has a, have a strong support level. Actually, I could bring this up right here. So this is last week where we saw a lot of bouncing. So for now, once this pulls back, I'll go ahead and take down some of our iron condors, but I'm gonna, I would, I would suggest waiting for that pullback and then you should be back in the, the green if you're not still. So I know the last one that we did put on is a little bit red after today's bounce or this morning's bounce and it is Monday morning. So just keep that in mind. Ivy's really high. We had a, the weekend bounce to go through. Did want to go through this, oh, not UVXY. We want to take a look at the VIX. So the VIX, if you don't have this on your everyday Radar, you absolutely should, should, especially if you're an option trader. So we want to have it in this, in this range, which we are right now, somewhere in here. So the lower it is, the more bullish the sentiment is on the market. Um, we're, we're in this healthy kind of boundary right now. So I would expect still just, just more steady climbs, but could we get to 18 on the VIX this week with the FOMC decision coming out and and everything going on this week, absolutely. I would be very, just very mindful of the amount of exposure that you have, especially for options. Rate decisions. So we had TLT, this is our 20 year treasury. This is the one that's gonna move. I would expect if we get some, this guy is gonna be moving quite a bit. We're in a huge downtrend really. And this is why I say the market is expecting so we're coming off of 172. Remember, as this goes down, rates go up. So the market is pricing in some of those rate hikes already. And again, I just, I don't think that it's gonna be a huge thing, but I do think that it's gonna be quite choppy as we get into Wednesday. And I think one thing, I did see this one. So this is oil. We did have a little lower high last week. We still have our support right around 80 and we have an OPEC meeting actually on Friday. So if you're in some of the oil stocks right now, I, I think I'll start trimming this week. Uh, but I think we could pull back a little bit just around 80. It, realistically, this from a, a longer time perspective, this is not, I mean, this is, this is, this is not extraordinarily high pricing oil even though it feels that way, cause we're coming off like zero. But uh, if you t put it in perspective, you know, this is, this is still pretty low compared to some of the other commodity indexes that we've been looking at. So that is that we want to take a quick check at crypto and Bitcoin. So we had this one, this is the prior all-time high, we have a new all-time high. And again, going into alt season, I'm expecting this little consolidation, not ready yet here. And I'm just gonna make a quick little line there. So let me know if this breaks out, but for now, this is gonna be range bound for a little while, which is gonna be really good for altcoins, which if you're in the group, you know what I'm talking about. And uh, they'll just be diversifying some of their profits from Bitcoin to some of the other tokens out there. So take a look at that. Cool. I'm just gonna jump into a quick chart. So I did see, I said Facebook still going. I think that one bounced pretty nice off of that 304 level. And 
we are just about breaking this trend here. And I'll send these into the watch list later on. I think if this if this continues to break, then we can see a really big push higher, even though there's all kinds of uh, hearings and what have you going on. I think the fact that it's moving still, and this is actually a pretty significant level that we're breaking above right here, is going to be fairly bullish for this one so far. All right, so this line here, this is the one I'd really be looking for. I'll move this out just a little bit. If you get a break, this could push and this is like a this week, it could push. The next level of resistance is just over 340 with the 50 day at 350. So between now and the next hearing, 350, I think we could see a real target if this doesn't break down. But once we do hit here, you expect to pull back and then another re-entry. What else do we have? So Apple, Apple. Apple was one that ran last week. We have 150 resistance and we are right on it. So we know support around 138 and change. 150 was our line. Nice round number. We're pulling back a little, which could set up to bounce off that 50 day. I don't know if you guys can see that. And if this does break, this will be a nice runner. Could probably run straight into 155 later this week, which would put you right around here. So maybe either 150, 155 debit spreads. So here's our 50 day right here. See where we're bouncing? This would be one that I'm watching right now for sure. And I want to see this line break, right? So we want to see a break, bounce down, and push back up. I want to take a look at your quick list, Stephen, from the watch list. Oh, Boeing. Yeah, Boeing was a good one. Boeing. Oh, you did. Look at you, you dog. You got a nice bounce there. All right. So I got the downtrend. That could be easily your exit or target, right? Short yeah, that's trend. exactly where... So I can just look at this really quick. Also 50 days. So this is going to be nice. If you do break this, oh, that's going to be a good runner. <laughs> yeah. Sure. These are your best entries though, by the way. So as they're coming off of support up to this resistance towards kind of like the peak of this consolidation level. See, even here, this would have been a good entry, right? Towards the peak, towards the end. And we're real tight here. I, uh, if this If this does go... And remember, I have our average daily ranges. So today, we'll see. But yeah, this actually sets up for a really nice long-term trade. Maybe a couple of weeks if you if you do trade it, play it right. So let me see. What are you? Yeah, doing? I'm in the so eleven minutes. Two twenty right this now. week. Do what? You're taking us to two twenty this week. Is that what I'm reading? Um, I think the fifty day was at like two eighteen. Yep. But yeah, I mean, 220 this week would be awesome. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. And that kind of lines up with where my downtrend line is. Yep, and mine. Um, so I can see just right now on the on the option chain, I got 215, 220 debit spreads for next week. Very busy. 210 call as well as <laughs> the 215 call trading at 215 call for this week trading about... 128 bucks uh, on a pullback, right? So let me, let's just do this for you guys. What does a pullback look like? Right now, we know. We want to enter on a higher low, right? So we know we got a higher high so far. We got a break in structure, small one. So this downtrend structure is this first swing trader short-term structure right this is broken we have a target out of 50 day and this dynamic resistance we have a higher high we want to have an entry on a higher low this is your prior support or 
the prior bounce, right? This is at 208 and change, 208.33. I would be happy with an entry anywhere around 210 if you can get it. Uh, if you're entering here, just know, yeah, it's, it's on a quick tear. You might want to take some profits quickly. Uh, it's only a couple bucks. So depending on how you're trading it, this current level is a big deal here. So see this, this is prior, a small level of support. And this level here lines up. So if it's above this level, that's okay too. Don't always get the pullback that we want. You may see a little bounce off of here. That will work. Or if you get a bounce off of here, that will work. Mm -hmm. Cool. So if you're sitting there thinking, oh, I have to wait for a pullback and it just keeps running, don't, don't, don't just like walk away. Just look at it again, you know, and this is, this is going to be a level right here, 210, as well as 208. Cool. I like that one, man. Nice find. CrowdStrike. I'm looking at this level right here, so you guys can see this. And I'm sure this is exactly what he's looking at, right? So you have this prior resistance, and we want to see it what? We want to see the prior resistance become support. Did it here? No, it didn't. Well, it looked like it did. And this is your first fake out, right? Happens all the time. Will it happen? Again, it did not happen here. But the best type of trade is when you can line a support level up. And that's taken hourly. When you can line a support and resistance flip, right? We call this like SRI. SR flip, right? So when resistance flips to support and you can tee that up or marry that up with some kind of moving, a significant moving average here that everyone's watching, which you know, uh, and you can catch a two to three candle reversal, right? So we're coming down here. If I get a green bar, fully you guys know what a reversal candle looks like and we'll have a training on that later for right now if i can get a green bar at some point completely over this 270 that will qualify as a reversal i don't know what it's going to look like you don't need to be an expert in candlesticks to know that whatever flavor of reversal you want to call it it's going to be it's going to need to be a green bar full blown above 270 to qualify so maybe that looks like a bounce here, right? And you would likely see this right here. And you have this pullback, something like this. So I'm taking <coughs> this level here. So you can see this actually here, right? So this level, this little red candle, this little green wick down here might be the little stutter step to find your entry, assuming that this bounces somewhere in this range which it looks like it will i like this setup yeah so we can see where's the real you get real oh you know what let's use a quick trick all right so tricky tricky we'll find it right there Yeah. So we got a little bit further down to go. And you're going to be looking for a green candle fully above the prior candle. How's that? Wherever this goes. Maybe this goes chop. Right? And it'll be something like that. Wherever that is. So just keep an eye on this one. We're coming up right on this nice little uh, intersection. For a very nice little trade. Yeah, I don't think it would go really that far. I honestly would spec right somewhere right around here. So keep an eye on it. It's gonna be a good one. Um, again, really just be cautious this week. We have a lot of data coming out um, Wednesday, and I would expect some a very very choppy week. So with Powell's speeches, you guys know. We'll all be grabbing our popcorn, watching it together. We can have a little watch party. Um, 
a lot of it is already priced in the market. I'm not expecting a big move, but I'm expecting definite chop. So we'll see you guys there. Cool. Steve, you want to add anything? Uh, no. no. Yeah. Big earnings week, guys. Huge earning weeks. So, yeah. Uh, just be aware we're, we're going to have a lot of those. I think it was like 1,500 companies this week, 2,500 something last week. So uh, definitely, oh, you know what? I had this here. 103 today, 274 tomorrow, 354 Wednesday, 479 Thursday, 65 Friday. So big earnings week. All right, guys. Adios.